Well, we've come now to our Bible reading. It comes from Matthew chapter 1 and it's verses 18 to 25. Uh, You can follow it in a Bible if you've got one to hand, but the words will also be on the screen. And Jane is going to read it for us. The reading this evening is from Matthew 1, verse 18 to 25, the birth of Jesus Christ. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home to be his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. For this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I think it's probably a good thing that the nativity happened 2,000 years ago, rather than in 2020, or it would have looked rather different. Matthew tells us in the reading we've just heard that Joseph was pledged to be married to Mary. I wonder how they would have sorted out the 15 guests they could have at their wedding. I wonder who would have been in the family bubble for Christmas. Would the shepherds have been key workers because of being involved in food production? Or would they have been furloughed? Would there be anyone for the heavenly host to come and proclaim the birth of our Lord and Saviour too? Or would they have been sent home on 80% pay? It's just as well that Luke in his Gospel tells us that the angel said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace on those on whom his favour rests. Because they wouldn't have been allowed to sing, well, unless they were in a small choir and under quite strict rules. What about the wise men? Would they have had to quarantine for two weeks when they got to Israel? Would they have been barred or banned altogether from entering Israel? Would there have been a travel ban altogether? Of course, I'm assuming they're in tier one and they can have six people inside, six people around the manger. Let's discount the child because Jesus is under one year old. You've got Mary and Joseph. Let's assume there are just two shepherds. Which of the three wise men get let in? probably a good thing there was no room at the inn that they ended up in a stable because it was probably fairly drafty and well ventilated. Of course there is a plus side. We're told that after Joseph had considered quietly divorcing Mary an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and the angel told him what to do. I expect that our politicians would quite like that divine revelation of the Lord telling them what to do right now. 2020 has been quite a year, hasn't it? It's been tragic in many ways. I expect, like me, you know somebody who's had coronavirus. Perhaps you yourself have had it or it's been a family member. I hope, unlike me, you don't know anyone who has died from it. Last year, if somebody had told us what 2020 would have been like, the restrictions the government would bring in, if they told us that shops and offices would shut, pubs and restaurants would be closed, that children would be sent home from school, not just for a couple of weeks, but for six months. If they told us that we'd be confined to our home for weeks on end, we wouldn't have believed it. And yet, here we are. But then it seems like the idea of a virgin giving birth is just as unbelievable as if somebody had told us about the restrictions last year. And yet here we are this evening celebrating Jesus' birth, celebrating that the Virgin did give birth. What's more, Isaiah told us about it, not just a year before, 600 years before. Matthew writes, all this took place 
to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. I think, however, it can obscure the real wonder of Christmas. Because the wonder of Christmas isn't the virgin birth. The biggest miracle, the biggest wonder of Christmas is the second part of that prophecy from Isaiah. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, the prophet says. But he goes on. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The real miracle of Christmas, the real wonder of Christmas, is that God left heaven. He came to earth, a foreign country, a foreign world, not with two weeks isolation, but with nine months gestation. He lived as a key worker, healing people. The blind saw, the lame walked, the lepers were cured, and the dead were raised to life. And whilst the writer to the Hebrews tells us that he sustains all of creation, his birth wasn't quite what you'd expect for the arrival of God. His birth wasn't celebrated by any family gathering. There was no bubble here. It was only Joseph at the birth. Rather than a great fanfare proclaiming the arrival of the good and the great, it's announced to shepherds on a hillside. Shepherds didn't have a great reputation. They were generally treated with contempt. They couldn't get to the temple uh, to worship, so they were on the edge of society. But if you remember later in his life, Jesus talks about being a shepherd, and he has to qualify it. He has to say that he is the good shepherd, to distinguish himself from the hired hand, from the shepherds who weren't good. The only people who notice this birth are foreign visitors, visitors the family have never seen before. Here is God. Come to earth as a man, Emmanuel, God with us. And hardly anybody notices. And rather than being rescued by a vaccine, he has come to rescue us. Give his life for us. Why? Well, the angel told Joseph that he would save people from their sins. Now, some people say, well, I don't need rescuing. I don't need a saviour. I'm all right as I am. They think that they are fine. They think that everything is all right in their life. But if the virus has taught us anything, it has taught us that just because you can't see something, it doesn't mean it isn't there. Just because we don't have symptoms doesn't mean we don't have the virus. We can be asymptomatic. As the vaccine is rolled out earlier this month, uh, I'm sure more will follow. It will give us protection for a while. Nobody knows how long some scientists say, well, three months, maybe six months, possibly uh, a whole year, maybe longer, maybe a lifetime. The protection, the rescue that Jesus, our Saviour, brings doesn't last months, doesn't last a few years or a lifetime. Friends, it lasts for eternity. The sacrifice God made on the cross for us, Jesus made for us, lasts forever. There's talk about whether people will get a vaccine. Uh, if I'm offered it, I will be taking it, and I hope you will too. But we have to make a decision about whether we want the vaccine. And it's the same with Jesus. We have to make a decision about whether we want to accept his sacrifice on our behalf. I don't know what you think about that. I don't know if you've ever considered it, but I invite you to do that. You'd be very welcome to join our Alpha course when it runs next year. You could come to services here in the church. You could continue watching our online services Sunday by Sunday. Or you could give me a ring or drop me an email if you'd like to find out more. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, we thank you that he came to rescue us, to give his life for us. Lord, we thank you for the, the real miracle of Christmas, that you are with us. And we pray that we would accept your salvation, accept your rescue. Lord Jesus, come into our hearts today. Come into our hearts to stay. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Well, friends, we're going to sing again. This baby, God with us, Emmanuel, wasn't an ordinary baby as we've heard. He was the son of God who left heaven, was born not in a royal palace, but in a stable. Walked on earth, he died to redeem us, and he is now seated at our right hand on high. Our next carol is Once in Royal David City. <laughs> 